this little guy is my hero. Not only because he's my adorable two-year-old son, but also because he's the very best tester in the world. He constantly tries to push things to their limits. He drops something to the ground, he throws something against the wall, and he watches what happens. Just like when he tried to make absolutely sure that the so-called easy to wash off paint <laughs> was actually easy to wash off. <laughs> well, needless to say, it wasn't. But rest assured, he is still my hero. And you know what? He's not only my hero, but he should also be considered the hero of the manufacturer of the paint. Because that manufacturer got one of the very best testers in the world to work for them. So now that we have a common understanding of what it means to test something, let's turn our attention to something different. And let's consider software. Because software needs to be tested as well. And software, believe it or not, is everywhere. We are dependent on it, and we are actually addicted to it. Think of your smartphone, which wouldn't exist without software. Think of your bank card. You wouldn't be able to use it if there wasn't any software for it. And, well, even consider your dishwasher, which is also full of software. So let's consider the following scenario. You go out and you decide to spoil yourself. You buy this big and fancy new smartphone, the kind that doesn't fit in your pocket anymore. And uh, you, you switch it on for the very first time, and it actually just works. So you decide to spoil yourself a bit more, and you also buy a car. You turn it on for the very first time, and what happens? It asks to be refueled, so far so good, but it also asks to be connected to the internet, to download the latest updates. If that were to happen, I would be astonished, and I'm pretty sure you would be too. Because somehow, in our collective mindset, we accept that things that contain software need to be updated constantly, and not because there are new features coming in, no, to fix things that went wrong in the first place. So, where did we go wrong in this whole process? Well, if you ask me, there are two important reasons. And the first reason can actually best be described by a quote from former United States President Bill Clinton. You might remember, it's the economy, stupid. And what he was trying to say there, and what I'm trying to say here, is that manufacturers of hardware they're very aware that the things that they're putting on the market, they should be okay in the first place. Because if a car manufacturer, for example, would have to recall all of its cars to the shop and have a mechanic fit a new component, that manufacturer would incur a huge cost to make those fixes. On the other hand, if your software is wrong, contains a mistake, you just ask your customers to connect to the internet, download an update, and everything is okay again. So the second reason then, the second reason I can only describe as a general lack of interest in making things work well. Let me tell you a little anecdote. I'm teaching the first year computer science students how to program. And with programming comes testing. So a few months ago, a student stood up in class and he asked, why should I test this piece of software when I can just see things appearing on the screen? Things are working, right? And that's just it. At the average programmer, he gets an adrenaline rush from seeing something appearing on the screen, but he has no interest in making sure that things are actually working the way that they should be. Now I'm hearing you think, this only happens with your students. This doesn't happen in industry. Might be, might be, but let me tell you another anecdote. A student starts his internship in a company, and after a few weeks, he reports back to me, and he starts explaining that he found a bug in the company's financial software. 
He was very proud, actually, of that find. He was smiling. He should be. Yet, the next day, he goes to confront his manager at the company. And this manager, this manager becomes angry with him. He starts to shout. I would rather not have known about this bug, because now I have to turn around my whole schedule. And I first have to attend to this bug before I can continue with the other stuff that I need to do. This guy was angry. How absurd can you be? How can you belittle this bug in such a way? Have we just all become so afraid of what our colleague or our boss thinks when we're doing something wrong? Are we all looking over our shoulder to our left, to our right? And if we're absolutely sure that nobody's watching, we're sweeping our own mistakes under the rug. If I look at it from this angle, I feel ashamed to call myself a software engineer. Simply ashamed. Because I know sometimes software engineers really, really get it wrong. Look at the nice fireworks. That was the very first Ariana 5 rocket from the European Space Agency. It exploded mere seconds after takeoff. And a few billion euros were lost along the way. <clears throat> this was a software error. Patients died because of a radiation overdose. Simply a software error. And our much hated Fira train. <laughs> a lot was wrong with it. Pieces fell off. But maybe one of the biggest things wrong with it was actually the software. So again, a software error. Are we ready to open Pandora's box and let this self-driving car into our lives? Who's going to be responsible if things start to fail here? So the basic thing is that my two-year-old, he seems to be willing to do everything to break something. Yet if we ask software engineers how much time they actually spend on testing their software and then later verifying how much time they actually spend, we get a three times overestimation. A three times overestimation. Talk about something being unpopular. Now, what should we do about it? In a way, I have the feeling that these last few years have all about being about innovating. You hear it everywhere, we should innovate. It's a buzzword. But I think we should not only innovate, we should make sure that the innovations that we're putting out are actually working as well. And might the paradoxical answer to our problem be that we need software to make better software? We're using software for so many things. We're using software to stay in touch with our friends. That's Facebook. We're using LinkedIn to make our business network grow. So why shouldn't we use software to make people talk about failure? Setting, setting things in motion. So the thing in which I believe is that gamification can be a first step here. If we gamify, which means that we let people score points, get to new levels and compete with each other when it comes to testing, we'll at least get people to test more. But we shouldn't stop at that, because then we would just have programmers sitting behind their screens, testing some more, testing some more, and even more. We should also get these people to talk to each other about their failures, to learn from their failures. So the software platform that we're thinking of will actually record each and every failure that somebody produces. And also the solutions that are applied to fix these failures. Because I know one thing. Mistakes are the best teacher. So if we can get people to talk about their mistakes, embrace their mistakes, interact with each other, talk about the solutions, and maybe come up with better solutions, I think we can get better software along the way. And that will, according to me, make a tremendous difference. 
we can all become heroes and we can all make things better in this way. Thank you.